So I realized just uh, a few weeks ago that I've owned this watch for 20 years. Now, the reason that I suddenly dawned on me was because uh, my Brantley dealer got in touch with me and uh, sent me some pictures of the new 70th anniversary uh, Navi timer. This being the 50th anniversary, hence the 20 years ownership of the watch. I bought this back in 2002 when it first came out. Now, when I saw the pictures of the 70th anniversary, my first reaction was, ooh, just didn't like it at all. They've really, how can I say, they've, they've kind of cheaped out on it, I think. They've been lazy more than anything else. Now, one of the reasons I liked, when I first saw this one, I liked it immediately. Uh, and one of the reasons was because it was different to the current Navi timer at that time. So this is my other Navi timer, which is dating around about the same time. So you can see the, the dial is completely different. Uh, the, the old, this one is called the old Navi timer, the blue dial one. Uh, this uses the ETA 78, no, 7750 movement. So when uh, Brightly wanted to do the, the 50th anniversary, they didn't use the same movement, which I really liked. I like the fact that they've, they've decided to use a completely different movement. Uh, so this is the Brightly Calibre 41, which is basically the ETA 2892. Um, is it, it's it's no at that time Breitling was were using ETA movements. Then now they're using their in-house movements, which yeah, fair enough. Um, they've they've got better um, power reserve. They may be a little bit more accurate, but this is this is um, uh, cost certified as well. I think the new one is as well. So really, I yeah, I really don't see the the big deal about the, having an in-house movement and charging so much for it. Now. This watch, when I bought it, I believe the retail price was um, just over two thousand pounds. I think it was two thousand two hundred. Uh, I think I'm trying to just think at the top of my head. I think I paid about eighteen hundred for it, brand new, uh, from Breitling. And the new one, the seventieth anniversary, is retailing at seven thousand pounds, which is a huge amount of money. Now, if you look at in terms of um, inflation. Um, that's just beyond inflation. That's like um, a three three hundred percent price increase compared to this. Yes, again, as, uh, as I said earlier, it's using an in-house movement. It's uh, is it any better? I don't know about that. Uh, but I wouldn't. I just couldn't pay that amount of money for for that watch. Now, one of the reasons is they've all they've done is they've changed the dial of the watch. They've put a new logo on the top. They've produced it, I think it's in six colors. They've used the same case. They've, I don't think it's available on stainless steel bracelet. Like this one is, uh, was available on stainless steel bracelet and uh, leather strap and crocodile straps. And it came in two color variations. So you had the black dial, which I've got here. And then it also came in a white dial. And you could get it in uh, white gold and also yellow gold. But the new one really just seemed like a money grab to me. And I just can't. I, it, it, it grates on me does that stuff like that grates on me they haven't sort of tried to do anything different so that's something i will not be adding to my collection uh i'm quite glad i've still got this one because probably about 10 years ago i almost sold this now this has reached its um, bottom line in terms of depreciation uh, i would have sold it back then for just over probably about two thousand pounds so I would, I would have i think it was going for about 2003 2004 um, at that time these now are selling for about three and a half to four thousand pounds, and um, I don't know. I haven't worn it for for that amount of time for ten years, and I've only took it out of the safe because it kind of reminded me when I when I got the email for the seventieth anniversary, and I'm still sort of thinking, well, do I? It's only going to appreciate in value now. Now there's not there's not that many of these around. Um, the the white dial was I think the one that sold less. But I was looking on Corona 24 earlier and it, there was 20 on there and there was, it was 50-50 black and white dial. So I don't know how many of these are out there. After 20 years, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of them will have perished. But um, yeah, I'm kind of in two minds. Do I sell it? Do I keep it? It is a great watch. But because I've got this Navi timer, I've got this Navi timer, then I've got the 806 Navi timer, I think it could be time to move some of them on because if I haven't worn it for such a long time, but it is a nice watch as I've been wearing it now. And I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I don't want to sell it. Uh, I do like the fact that uh, one of the things I like about Breitling is their anti-reflective coating is just amazing. You can just, you can see like there's no glass uh, crystal on there at all. 
they do a really good job with their anti-reflecting. I know a lot of people don't like it because it gets marked, because if you can look at it here, I don't know if you can see, there are some marks on the uh, anti-reflective coating, but I would much rather have a watch with anti-reflective coating than not. Now, condition-wise, this is in pretty good condition. I've got some scratches here at the bottom of the, uh, the bracelet, but that's just to be expected. That can be easily polished out. Uh, and the other thing is they, they made, when they made this, they did it in brushed only. So the new one, they've just actually they've just thrown a new dial on there and said, yep, that'll do. Let's sell it. Uh, so they haven't even tried to change the, uh, the case. They haven't brushed it. They haven't done anything else different to it. They've just put a, a dial on there. And, and that, it annoys me. It really does annoy me. But this is a great watch. I'm glad I've still got it. Um, one of the things I don't like about this movement, the, the ETA2892, is the way the chronograph uh, works. Uh, it's got a really nice movement to it. The second hand just sweeps uh, really smoothly. But what I don't like about the movement is uh, the, the minute counter. The minute counter slowly moves across as the seconds are ticking over. So when it, 30 seconds have elapsed, it will the, the minute counter sort of moves across to the middle. And then when it gets to the uh, 60 second, it moves over completely all very gradually. I prefer the way uh, the 7750 movement works, where it just it ticks over at uh, at one minute. I like that. Um, I don't like the way it crawls. It's, I think it's harder to read the the seconds when it crawls over. I prefer it just ticking over. You can you can see much more clearly like it's at one minute. Um, then you can look at the second. It's like all right, 15 seconds. But when it's crawling, you sort of got to take a double take on it. All right, where where's this the minute hand? Is it in the middle? It just takes that fraction longer and you just got to stare at it a little bit longer and harder. So I prefer the um, the, the movement of the 7750. The loom on this watch, I was really surprised considering it's it's 20 years old, is really strong. It's The watch is all, it, almost like it's still brand new and a, a few scratches here and there. If I had them polished out, uh, this watch could almost pass as brand new. I was I wore it for about two years and almost continuously. Then I put it down because I was wearing my other watches. Uh, so it hasn't had that much damage to it. There's a few scratches here and there, but apart from the bracelet, which gets the majority of marks and dents. Yeah, glad I've still got it. I think I probably would have regretted selling it. Um, it would have been one of those regretful uh, moments where I've sold the watch then later regretted it. Uh, this one also you can see the um, the logo is different. It's got the two flying uh, arrows. I like that. Um, the old Na Navi timer, the original one, had the same, the uh, 806 back in the 70s, I think it was, the early 70s and late uh, 60s. They used this logo uh, before that. Uh, they had the other winged logo, which they're using now on the uh, 70th anniversary. And I also like the fact that they've printed, I like the printed logos on the Breitling watches. You can see this has got the printed logo on there. And then the old Navi Time has also got the printed logo. Uh, on my B50, uh, on, sorry, B1, it also has the printed logo on there. I just like it. I think it's more attention to detail. It's nicer to look at. The new ones have the applied one. It's a kind of, do you like that or do you not, do you like this one? I prefer this one. I'm sure for some people prefer the, uh, the printed, uh, sorry, the uh, the applied one, but but yeah, I really like this watch. Should I sell it? I don't know. Um, I'm gonna wear it for the next uh, few weeks uh, and see how I feel. Um, but where I feel now, I'm thinking no. There could be some other days where I'm thinking, all right, I'll sell it. What would you do? Would you sell it? Um, I have been looking at some of the watches, like the new Amiga. Um, is it the um, 1957, which I'm really really tempted to buy. But um, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm trying now. I'm trying to think. All right, sell something, then buy something. Don't just keep buying and buying and buying because then I've got too many watches. So that's what made me think: Shall I sell this? Put the money towards that and sell a few other ones. That way, one watch in, one watch out, or two watches out, one one watch in. So um, I don't know. What would you guys do? Would you sell it? Would you keep it? Do you like the new 70th anniversary? Would you buy the new 70th anniversary, um, or would you just give it a pass like I'm doing? Let me know. Thanks for watching.